think when I first came, my first connections were with the Jewish Community Center, uh, the one down 156th Street. And um, basically myself and uh, my husband and kids lived there, uh, not literally, but there was a pool there, which we would go to every Sunday. There was a lot of volunteering, of course, Temple Beth Ora, the synagogue that I joined when I came here, um, was also housed out of the Jewish Community Center. Um, it was a wonderful facility. I have lots of good memories about that. Um, the Tamatora, both the old one, which my kids attended up till uh, our oldest was in grade three, and then the school moved to the West End. And I spent many, many hours uh, there volunteering and, and uh, being there for the kids. Um, Menorah Academy, actually, when the year it started, one of our kids attended kindergarten there. So I had uh, volunteer connections with that. Um, Beth Shalom, for a period of uh, about 10 years, we were members of both Temple Beth Ora and Beth Shalom. And I worked with a lot of people at Beth Shalom on a, in a volunteer capacity. Probably the most memorable involvement was in something called Mitzvah Day, which um, we gathered thousands, if not more, of items for uh, about 22 different charities. And it happened once a year, the third Sunday in November. And that physically, all the items were gathered at the Jewish Community Center. So I spent a lot of time there and lots of stories about volunteers and um, I can't actually pull out one single memory except the vision of that gym being packed full of about 150 people and each department if you would call it that so there was a, a department with food a department with clothing departments with furniture that sort of stuff each department was housed by volunteers and we had streams of the charities coming in to uh, pick up their own gift boxes and we had other streams of people pulling up in cars to deliver to families and so I I have that vision of the uh, activity at the Jewish Community Center that revolved around that event every year so I think when the kids were younger um, I was very closely tied in with the Tamatora and more involved with that then and as they evolved I got more involved in probably in the synagogue and so my connections were more intense for certain segments of years with different places and the projects that we were doing the fundraisers the chess club at the Tamatora the whatever was happening sort of depended on the stage uh, that my family was at. Our, our middle kid loved playing chess. And so I thought, well, I'll start a chess club at noon. Maybe we'll get Josh and his best friend, Max, and we'll get two kids and they'll play each other and we'll see. Maybe other kids will be interested. The first day that we, uh, it was at lunchtime and we denounced it in the announcements. We had 75 kids show. And that was in the, at the time, I'm not even sure if there was 200 kids in the school. But it was remarkable. And these kids were passionate about learning chess, playing chess. So we, uh, there was a fellow named Jonathan Schaefer. I don't know if that's a name that's come up. He's a university prof. I'm not even sure if they're still in Edmonton. Brilliant guy. Uh, he created the checkers program called Deep Blue that beat the, uh, a computerized program that beat the world checkers champion but he was a genius at chess so he coached the kids after school in chess and this group of kids that just were kind of interested in in this game we ended up going to the uh, the city finals then the provincial finals ironically were held at in red deer at a hotel called the uh, black knight inn <laughs> so uh, that was that was remarkable to see these kids so focused and so interested who might otherwise have been uh, had 
other learning challenges, but they were so passionate about this game and playing and watching the ladder and who was playing who. That was a wonderful, um, a wonderful thing that uh, I recall from Tamatora. So uh, when the Tamatora moved from the old building to the new building, I believe our daughter, who's now 35, uh, was in grade three. So, and so then um, the other two would have been like grade one and maybe just preschool when they moved to the new building. And um, yeah, it was it was quite an interesting adventure. You'll probably have somebody else talk about talk about that. But I certainly have a lot of memories in both buildings. Of, we did a, something called Safari Days when we were in the old building. And I worked with a couple of other volunteers, Ruth Coppins and Leah Goldford. Leah, you would know from Beth Israel. And it was a really interesting thing because most of us are Ashkenazi Jews, right? Our parents came, or grandparents came from Eastern Europe. And so Leah had said, you know, we're woefully ignorant of this whole other branch of Judaism. We need to let people know about it. So people like Odette Maslia and uh, who came from different backgrounds. We had stations and the whole entire school, all every classroom, every teacher was involved and they moved from station to station and learned about Sephardi Jews. So that certainly was a, a place image that, that stands out. So great. Back, oh, the pool, the JCC pool. I loved that place. We had such great memories there uh, with family, friends and kids and that. But it's just not, um, it's a very expensive proposition to run a facility like that. And there are lots of other facilities. But yeah, I do miss that. And, and the gym, our kids used to play there after services. Uh, they'd run and play basketball and have a great old time. So yeah, that was, was quite remarkable singing and carrying the Torahs all the way from uh, the old location of the Jewish Community Center to the Hever Kedisha um, building at um, just off uh, 123rd and 105th and settling in there. That is what we call the house that Marshall built, the new home for Temple Beth or Marshall 100 was instrumental in um, acting as a liaison between the, the, the Hever Kedisha and Temple Beth Ora and making sure that we found a new home and that it, you know, it worked for all the parties. I, I've enjoyed being um, a volunteer and aspects of being a volunteer coordinator because if you can match the right people with the right job, then everybody has a good time and everything moves forward. So I guess that's sort of what sticks with me from those years of volunteering, no matter what the organization or the location. But what I do miss is the energy of all these people coming together for various projects that it may have been months and months in the making, but when they actually happened, there's just a magic about it wherever the place was, whether it was um, at the JCC, or as I remember it, with that gorgeous view of the river valley and the uh, Temple Beth or as you know, Karen sings in a, or sang in a choir that was associated with Temple Beth or called Kavirat Hashir. So the image of them singing and us looking down at the river valley and the in the fall with the colors changing. And that's a, a, a strong image of place, I guess, but it's more the energy of the people. Um, and then the number of different, like the mitzvah days that were also in that place, the energy of all these people who normally would not be mixing. We had people from Beth Israel who had never met people from Beth Ora or people who really had nothing to do with Jewish community, but they wanted to volunteer for this because they felt that it was a way of giving back. And so you had all these people working side by side uh, for a full day of high energy, something that, that everybody could walk away from and feel good. And that's more the, the that's I guess the sense that stays with me. And it is a 
it happened in the place, but it was that energy and that connection of people. And I, I really personally enjoyed that. 